Greetings, friends. My name is Pavel Stelmach, and now we will dive into the top news of this day. The Ukrainian military shot down the seventh Russian helicopter in June alone. The counterattack had not yet begun or not. What is definitely the strategic goal of the Ukrainian troops is the liberation of all occupied territories. At the same time, success at the front line is measured not only by advancing, but also by inflicting maximum losses on the enemy and undermining its defense system in the rear. Someone can say that the defense forces of Ukraine are moving slowly, but our warriors act in a planned, reasonable and balanced manner, moving forward and preserving the life and health of our soldiers as much as possible. In contradiction to the enemy, who does not care about the losses. As of now, in the fierce battles in the east and south, Russian troops are suffering the same heavy losses in manpower and equipment as they did at Bakhmut. Ukrainian troops conduct offensive operations in several directions in the south, with the active support of the resistance movement, which operates in the temporarily occupied territories and performs its tasks perfectly. In the east, in particular in the Kupiansk Kuliman direction, the defenders of Ukraine are deterring large-scale enemy attacks. The main blow of the Ukrainian defense forces is still to come. In some areas, our warriors are moving forward. In some areas, they are defending their positions and resisting the occupiers' assaults and intensified attacks. We have no lost positions, only liberated ones. They have only losses. In general, it is a situation of pressure, our pressure, which allows us to pay for the way of our flag. Blue and yellow colors will be all over our south and all over our east. And the evil state has no such fortifications or reserves that will stop Ukraine, because we are on our own land, and this gives us the greatest strength. Just last week, our soldiers liberated eight settlements and 113 square kilometers. The Russian media is already given an explanation. All of them were in low land and disadvantages from a military point of view. Maybe as well as Kharkiv region, west bank of Dnipro in Kherson region, and other territories. So if you don't know, the east bank of Dnipro is lower than the west one. So it is time to get away from our lands, not only near Dnipro, but also Donetsk and Luhansk region, and Crimea too. Still, the peninsula is lower than the Crimean mountains. Two weeks ago, Russians blew the Kahovka Dam. Till now, water didn't go from lower regions. Till now, the debris of buildings, trees and garbage floats on the coast of the Black Sea in Crimea. Odessa region, Russia and Romania, and it is not the end yet. I want to show you some footage. It is the coast of Dnipro above the Kahov Dam. All this territory was floated with Kahovka Reservoir, but after blowing the dam all the water went down and now is a desert. But you know what is interesting? At the beginning of footage you saw Ukrainian inscription. Nothing to add. And in this video all Russian media is used as well such cynical propaganda. I will remind you that after two weeks after this terrorist act, Russians don't allow any humanitarian mission to come to occupied territory, allegedly as cannot ensure the safety of delegation. In reality, to hide the terror that they made in occupied territory. Dozens and even hundreds of people were drawn in their houses and streets as there was no evacuation. If you forget, I'll remind you that on the evening of the 6th of June, Kremlin minion Salda said that the water flow from the reservoir is not dangerous. And now, and now they are blaming us for blowing up the dam. Also, Russian propaganda disseminates the statement about the Ukrainian saboteurs blowing up the Talyati Odessa ammonia pipeline in Kharkiv region, expressed as an assumption in the German build. Ukraine, in principle, does not sabotage industrial infrastructure facilities that can cause significant damage to the environment and the civilian population. The Talyati Odessa ammonia pipeline suffered from Russian shelling during the full scale aggression of Russia against Ukraine. Publications in Western media about the alleged involvement of Ukraine in the creation of man made disasters openly play into the hands of Russian propaganda and are aimed at letting Russia avoid responsibility for the echo site on the territory of Ukraine. Russia is waging a genocidal war in Ukraine and always resorts to the tactics of the scorched earth. The aggressor does not care about people and the environment. Hiding behind this statement, not everything is so clear-cut. 
Russia carried out a terrorist attack on the dam of the Kakhovka HPP and now threatens a man-made disaster at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, spreading disinformation about the alleged preparation of Ukrainian provocations. The elimination of threats and risks of man-made disasters will happen only after the complete deoccupation of the territory of Ukraine. We are ready for a responsible discussion of the safety of industrial facilities with the international community, to allow monitoring missions to them and receive assistance in eliminating risks and overcoming the consequences of accidents. The Kremlin does not care about international documents, but not all of them. Now they denounced the agreement on cooperation in the use of the Sea of Azov and the Kerch Strait, which was signed in 2003. Russian propaganda claims that the Sea of Azov and the Kerch Strait became internal waters of the Russian Federation and Ukraine lost the status of a coastal state in relation to these waters. But regardless of what dreams the Russian authorities currently have, Ukraine remains a country washed by the waters of the Sea of Azov and the Kerch Strait because the Russian annexation of the adjacent territories of the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk and Luhansk regions is illegal and invalid. The agreement of 2003, which defined the Sea of Azov and the Kerch Strait as internal waters of Ukraine and the Russian Federation, has lost its force because it was denounced by Ukraine on February 24, 2023. According to the current administrative division, the state border in the Kerch Strait passes east of the island of Kosa Tuzla, so the navigable kerch Yenikal Canal is the sovereign waters of Ukraine. According to international maritime law, Ukraine can insist on establishing a state border with the Russia and the Sea of Azov. The internationally recognized principle of the middle line leaves 60% of the Azov water area on the Ukrainian side. If the Kremlin doesn't like this, we have another possible option. Ukraine has the right to independently establish a 12-mile zone of territorial waters, leaving international waters outside it free for navigation, in particular for military ships of third countries. As Russians can see, if you violate international laws, they begin to be interpreted differently and usually in a less favorable status than before the violation. Hungary is blocking Ukrainian authorities' access to 11 former prisoners of war that Russia handed over to it without informing the government or international human rights organizations. The assurances of the Hungarian authorities about the supposedly free status of Ukrainian defenders in Hungary are not true. Ukraine calls on Hungary to remove all obstacles to the return of former prisoners of war home and to provide an official explanation of the situation. The groundless detention of Ukrainian citizens in isolation can be qualified as a violation by Hungary of international law, in particular the European Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms. Even the aggressive state does not officially announce anything. The Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation did not confirm the fact of the transfer. We are dealing with a very strange case, as in many other cases when it comes to international law and the aggressive state. We are waiting for official confirmations for access to probably 11 Ukrainian defenders. We have a preliminary list, however, obtained from various sources, including operational channels. We cannot call it official. There is a list of those persons whom Hungary asked in Russia a few months ago. There were 13 turn names. There is a list of probably 11 that were passed on. The fact that we are discussing the situation at all is very unfortunate, because the event, which could be absolutely positive, turns into some kind of dramatic detective story with a very tangible political undertone. First of all, from Russia, which is conducting an informational and psychological operation. Andriy Yusuf, representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Hungary's actions call into question the declared humanitarian reasons for the transportation of the Ukrainians to Hungary. Participation in PR actions of the Kremlin and the Russian Orthodox Church does not contribute to the authority of the official Budapest, but can ruin Hungary's reputation as a responsible participant in the international community. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching. Stay updated and subscribe to our UATV English channel for more news from Ukraine. Your support really matters. Goodbye.